I do kind of feel like maybe this is slightly a trick question. Hello everybody, it's Charlie and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today I'm going to be doing more questions from the Questions and Answers Dental Nurses book. So if you don't know what this series is, I've done I think two or three videos already on my channel. What it basically is, is me going through the questions and answers for Dental Nurses book and trying to answer the questions myself to see what knowledge I have either actually retained from college or knowledge that I put in every day and see if experience can help me answer the questions. What I'm also going to do, not in today's video but in another video, I am actually going to be writing my own quiz for you guys to do. During this lockdown time, me and my friend got really, really bored and we did a little FaceTime quiz for each other and we had different categories. And she's also a dental nurse, so one of our categories was dentistry. So we made up questions and we had to answer them. So I thought that would be a really good idea for a channel video for you guys to put your knowledge to the test as well. Anyway, that's enough of me talking and telling you what I'm going to do. Let's get in with what this video actually is. And if you would like to see me try and answer these dental nurse questions, then just keep watching. Okay, so I've got my little book here. If you know this series, you know that what I'm gonna do is just flick through, stop at a random page, ask myself the question, and then try and answer it. So, let's crack straight on with it. Stop. This is category minor oral surgery, local anesthesia, and anxiety control. Question 23. A 33-year-old patient attends the dental surgery for the planned restoration of six teeth using a combination of endodontic and filling techniques. The patient is a dental phobic and has previously requested, requested that anxiety control techniques are used to enable her to undergo the treatment successfully. On the day of her appointment, she presents with a respiratory infection. Which one of the following anxiety control techniques cannot be used in this instance? A. Acupuncture. B. Hypnosis. C. Intransual sedation. D. Intravenous sedation. E. Oral sedation. Now this is very difficult for me because this would be some college knowledge. <sighs> college knowledge. We don't do sedation. I have actually absolutely no idea. I don't see why you couldn't use acupuncture for respiratory infection, so I don't think it's A. Don't see why you couldn't use hypnosis. Just mainly because I don't really know what it is, I'm gonna go C in transal sedation. Correct answer, D. And the reason why is because the drug midazolam is used for intravenous sedation, but its side effects include reduction in respiratory rate and depth of breathing. That's something you learned for me, because sedation isn't something that we do in the practice. I would not have learnt about it for, I don't know, five years or something. Anyway, let's move on to question two. This is dental pathology and microbiology. When attacked by pathogens, the body has several lines of defense that should prevent a disease from developing in a healthy person. Which one of the following is the last line of defense before the disease process begins? A, inflammatory response. B, mucous membrane. C, saliva. D, skin. E, sweat. I... I'm not really sure why it be saliva. I don't actually know what that's got to do with the question because it's not specifically saying an oral problem. Inflammatory response, I personally think is quite quick. Last line of defense, oh. I should give it an educated guess really, but I'm not actually that clever. I'm gonna take a total guess, the mucous membrane, B. Okay, correct answer, A. Uh, inflammatory response. Mucous membranes and the skin form an initial line of defense. Oh, to be honest, I was trying to think of inflammatory stuff. I don't know why that question just led me to it. So in my head, I was thinking, basically I learned something, which is anything that ends in itis is infection. Cystitis, periocoronitis, conjunctivitis. Don't know why it was leading me to think about inflammation there, but the first two wrong. And I'm only doing five questions in this one, so it's looking good so far. Anyway, let's not dwell, let's move on to question three, stop. Restorative dentistry and dental materials. Several dental materials used for restoration are adhesive to enamel or dentine, but others are not. Which one of the following materials requires the presence of undercuts for it to remain in place? A, amalgam, B, composite, C, glass ionomer, D, gold, E, porcelain. I'm not really sure what undercuts means. First of all, that's college knowledge. I'm not the dentist, I don't do the filling. This is another piece of guesswork. 
I mean, the minute the answer that's kind of flying up to me is porcelain, only because with porcelain, you need to drill the tooth to a specific shape. Whereas when you're just filling it, obviously amalgam is moldable, composite is moldable, glass ionomer can be moldable, gold, I think an educated guess would be E, porcelain. I'm really not sure, but we're gonna go for it. Okay, correct answer, A. That was amalgam. Amalgam is not adhesive to any dental tissues, and when used as a restorative material, it relies entirely on the presence of undercuts in the cavity to remain in place. I definitely didn't read the question properly, I'm not gonna lie about that, but I genuinely didn't know the answer to that question, so I'm not gonna try and make excuses for myself. That's another note. This is going swimmingly. Okay, this is legal and ethical issues now. <laughs> 40 year old patient attends the surgery to complete the current course of treatment. He has a porcelain veneer fitted in the upper left central incisor and a general scale and polish of all standing teeth. Which one of the following types of paperwork will the patient be given? A, consent form, B, estimate, C, medical history form, D, receipt, E, record card. Feel like this is kind of a trick question because they'll need an estimate, they'll need a consent form and they might need a medical history form and they also should be given a receipt. I think the key word here is complete the current course of treatment. He starts the course of treatment, which means the last time he was in for an appointment, he should have signed a consent form, he should have been given an estimate, and he should have updated his medical history form. However, saying that, I know that a lot of practices require you to do a medical history form every single time you come in. Others would be every six months, others would be once a year. I'm going to go for a D receipt, only because it says the word complete the current course of treatment. Once the treatment is completed, the patient should be given a receipt. So I'm gonna go D, receipt. Correct answer, D. Yes, receipt. As the patient is completing his course of dental treatment, he should already have been issued with an estimate and a consent form previously. The medical history form will have been issued, completed by the patient and returned to the records before treatment started. The key word in there, like I said, was complete. So what do you do when treatment's complete? Give a receipt. We're going to move on to the very last question now. So, assessment and diagnosis. It has long been understood that the incorporation of fluoride into the mineral structure of enamel can help reduce the incidence of dental caries. Which one of the following is an example of systemic fluoride? A. Fluoride gel. B. Fluoride mouthwash. C. Fluoride tablets. D. Fluoride toothpaste. E. Fluoride varnish. Again, college knowledge. I don't know what the word systematic, systemic, I can't even pronounce it. I don't know what the word systemic means. If you're in college, you probably do. Okay, looking at the answers, I'm I'm gonna go between either fluoride tablets or fluoride varnish. And the reason why is because the word systemic, all I can think of it is system. Oh, actually, now that I'm looking at it, fluoride varnish is the only one which you cannot just buy over the counter. I'm, I think, oh, maybe fluoride tablets, you can't either. Do you know what? Again, it's a guess. I'm gonna go answer E, fluoride varnish. Can't remember what the word systemic means. Answer E, fluoride varnish, final answer. Okay, correct answer, C. Ah, and that was fluoride tablets. Ah, oh, see, that was my other option. It says here, any fluoride product that is ingested and becomes incorporated into the internal structure of the teeth is systemic, such as fluoridated water or fluoride drops or tablets. Any fluoride products that are applied to the external surface of the teeth is topical, such as gels, varnishes, and routine oral health products. Didn't know that. That was awful. I failed miserably at that. That was horrific. Four wrong and one right. And if we're doing that in percentages, so that's what? 20% correct? That was bad. That was really, really not good. Like I said, most of those questions actually were college knowledge. That's gonna be a new thing on my channel now, college knowledge. Comment on this video, college knowledge, if you want, I don't know, just comment on this video, college knowledge. Anyway, like I said, I am going to be doing a little quiz for you guys, so I could miss a day of uploading because I'll be working on that, but I'm gonna keep this going as a series on my channel because I feel like it helps you guys. I think it helps you guys, not what this would have done. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
click that subscribe button down below and then click the little bell next to it and that will notify you when I next upload and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Yeah.